Hugh of St. Victor, CRSA C. 1096-11 February 1141, was a Saxon canon regular and a leading theologian and writer on mystical theology. Life As with many medieval figures, little is known about Hugh's early life. He was probably born in the 1090s. His homeland may have been Lorraine, Ypres in Flanders, or the Duchy of Saxony. Some sources say that his birth occurred in the Harz district, being the eldest son of Baron Conrad of Blankenburg. Over the protests of his family, he entered the Priory of St. Pancras, a community of canons regular, where he had studied, located at Hammerleva or Hammersleben, near Halberstadt, due to civil unrest shortly after his entry to the Priory, Hugh. S. uncle, Reinhard of Blankenberg, who was the local bishop, advised him to transfer to the Abbey of St. Victor in Paris, where he himself had studied theology. He accepted his uncle's advice and made the move at a date which is unclear, possibly 1115–18 or around 1120. He spent the rest of his life there, advancing to head the school. Works <laughs> <laughs> Hugh wrote many works from the 1120s until his death Migni, Petrologia Latina contains 46 works by Hugh, and this is not a full collection, including works of theology both treatises and sententiae, commentaries mostly on the Bible but also including one of Pseudo-Dionysus' celestial hierarchies, mysticism, philosophy and the arts, and a number of letters and sermons. Hugh was influenced by many people, but chiefly by St. Augustine, especially in holding that the arts and philosophy conserve theology. Hugh's most significant works include De Sacramentis Christiani Fidei on the mysteries of the Christian faith, on the sacraments of the Christian faith it is Hugh's most celebrated masterpiece and presents the bulk of Hugh's thoughts on theological and mystical ideas, ranging from God and angels to natural laws. Didascalicon de Studio Legendi Didascalion, or, on the study of Reading. The Didascalicon is written as an introductory guide to Christianity, reflecting Hugh's desire to be an elementary teacher of Christianity. The Didascalicon reveals a very philosophical side of Hugh, in which he reflects on what basic elements of learning a Christian should focus on. One of the chapters is on music and deals with the three kinds of music in a manner strongly indebted to Boethius. In Hierarchium Celestum Commentaria Commentary on the Celestial Hierarchy, a commentary on the work by Pseudo-Dionysus, perhaps begun around 1125. After Ereugena's translation of Dionysus in the 9th century, there is almost no interest shown in Dionysus until Hugh's commentary. It is possible that Hugh may have decided to produce the commentary which perhaps originated in lectures to students because of the continuing incorrect belief that the patron saint of the Abbey of Saint Denis, Saint Denis, was to be identified with Pseudo-Dionysus. Dionysian thought did not form an important influence on the rest of Hugh's work. Hugh S. Commentary, however, became a major part of the 12th and 13th century surge in interest in Dionysus. His and Ereugena's commentaries were often attached to the Dionysian corpus in manuscripts, such that his thought had great influence on later interpretation of Dionysus by Richard of St. Victor, Thomas Gallus, Hugh of Balma, Bonaventure, and others. Other works by Hugh of St. Victor include In Solomonus Ecclesiaston, Commentary on Ecclesiastes. In 1125-30, Hugh wrote three treatises structured around Noah's Ark, De Acca Noe Morali Noah's Moral Ark, on the moral interpretation of the Ark of Noah, De Acca Noe Mystica Noah's Mystical Ark, on the mystic interpretation of the Ark of Noah, and De Vanitate Mundi the world's vanity. De Acca Noe Morali and De Acca Noe Mystica reflect Hugh's fascination with both mysticism and the Book of Genesis. De tribus dibus on the three days. De sapientia anime Christi. De union corporis et spiritus, the union of the body and the spirit. Epitome dindimi in philosophium, epitome of dindimus on philosophy. Practica geometriae, the practice of geometry. De grammatica on grammar. Soliloquium de arha anime, the soliloquy on the earnest money of the soul. On contemplation and its forms. This is one of the earliest works devoted to contemplation. 
It appears not to be composed directly by Hugh, but to have been composed by students of Hugh of St. Victor, possibly from classnotes based on his teaching. On Sacred Scripture and its Authors Various other treatises exist whose authorship by Hugh is uncertain. Six of these are reprinted, in Latin in Roger Baron, ed., Hugues de Saint Victor, Six Opuscules Spirituals, Sources Chrétiennes 155, Paris, 1969. They are, De Meditation, De Verbo Dei, De Substantia Delectionis, Quid Vir Diligentis Est, De Quinque Septenis, and De Septem Donis Spiritus Sancti. De Anima is a treatise of the soul, the text will be found in the edition of Hugh's works in the Patrologia Latina of J. P. Migny. Part of it was paraphrased in the West Mercian dialect of Middle English by the author of the Catherine Group. Various other works were wrongly attributed to Hugh in later thought. One such particularly influential work was the Exposition of the Rule of St. Augustine, now accepted to be from the Victorini school but not by Hugh of St. Victor. A new edition of Hugh's works has been started. The first publication is. Hugonis de Sancto Victori de Sacramentis Christian Fide, ed. Rainer Berndt, Munster, Aschendorf, 2008. Topic: Philosophy and Theology. Topic: The early Didascalicon was an elementary encyclopedic approach to God and Christ, in which Hugh avoided controversial subjects and focused on what he took to be commonplaces of Catholic Christianity. In it he outlined three types of philosophy or science scientia, that can help mortals improve themselves and advance toward God, theoretical philosophy theology, mathematics, physics provides them with truth, practical philosophy ethics, economics, politics aids them in becoming virtuous and prudent, and mechanical or a liberal philosophy e.g., carpentry, agriculture, medicine yields physical benefits. A fourth philosophy, logic, is preparatory to the others and exists to ensure clear and proper conclusions in them. Hughes' deeply mystical bent did not prevent him from seeing philosophy as a useful tool for understanding the divine, or from using it to argue on behalf of faith. Hugh was heavily influenced by Augustine's exegesis of Genesis. Divine wisdom was the archetypal form of creation. The creation of the world in six days was a mystery for man to contemplate, perhaps even a sacrament. God's forming order from chaos to make the world was a message to humans to rise up from their own chaos of ignorance and become creatures of wisdom and therefore beauty. This kind of mystical ethical interpretation was typical for Hugh, who tended to find Genesis interesting for its moral lessons rather than as a literal account of events. Along with Jesus, the sacraments were divine gifts that God gave man to redeem himself, though God could have used other means. Hugh separated everything along the lines of Opus Creationis and Opus Restorationis. Opus Creationis was the works of the creation, referring to God's creative activity, the true good natures of things, and the original state and destiny of humanity. The Opus Restorationis was that which dealt with the reasons for God sending Jesus and the consequences of that. Hugh believed that God did not have to send Jesus and that he had other options open to him. Why he chose to send Jesus is a mystery we are to meditate on and is to be learned through revelation, with the aid of philosophy to facilitate understanding. Topic legacy Topic Within the Abbey of St. Victor, many scholars who followed him are often known as the School of St. Victor. Both Ackard and Andrew of St. Victor appear to have been direct disciples of Hugh. Others, who probably entered the community too late to be directly educated by Hugh, include Richard of St. Victor and Godfrey. One of Hugh's ideals that did not take root in St. Victor, however, was his embrace of science and philosophy as tools for approaching God. His works are in hundreds of libraries all across Europe. He is quoted in many other publications after his death, and Bonaventure praises him in De Reduction Artium ad Theologium. He was also an influence on the critic Eric Auerbach, who cited this passage from Hugh of St. Victor in his essay Philology and World Literature. It is therefore, a source of great virtue for the practiced mind to learn, bit by bit, first to change about invisible and transitory things, so that afterwards it may be able to leave them behind altogether. The person who finds his homeland sweet is a tender beginner, he to whom every soil is as his native one is already strong, but he is perfect to whom the entire world is as a foreign place. 
The tender soul has fixed his love on one spot in the world, the strong person has extended his love to all places, the perfect man has extinguished his. Topic works topic topic Modern editions topic Latin text Latin texts of Hugh of St. Victor are available in the Migni edition at Documenta Catholica Omnia, http colon slash slash www.documentacatholicomnia.eu slash 30 underscore 10 underscore 1096 1141 dash underscore Hugo underscore de underscore s underscore victory. HTML Henry Buttimer, Hugonus de Sancto Victory. Didascalicon. De Studio Legendi, Washington, D.C., Catholic University Press, 1939. Hugh of St. Victor, L'Herve de Hugues de St. Victor, 1. De Institution Novitiorum. De Virtute Orandi. De Laude Caritatis. De Arha Anime, Latin text edited by H. B. Fice and P. Sickard, French translation by D. Poirol, H. Roche and P. Sickard. Introduction, Notes and Appendices by D. Poirol Turnhout, Breppels, 1997 Hugues de Saint Victor, L'Herve de Hugues de Saint Victor, 2. Super Canticum Mariae. Pro Assumption Virginis. De B.T. Mariae Virginitate. Egrediator Virga, Maria Porta, edited by B. Jals Turnhout, Breppels, 2000 Hugo de Sancto Victori, de Archa Noe. Libellus de Formation Archi, ed. Patricius Sickard, CCCM Vol. 176, Hugonus de Sancto Victori Opera, I. Turnhout, Breppels, 2001, Hugo de Sancto Victori, de Tribus Dibus, ed. Dominique Poirol, CCCM Vol. 177, Hugonus de Sancto Victori Opera, 2. Turnhout, Breppels, 2002, Hugo de Sancto Victori, de Sacramentus Christian Fide, ed. Rainer Berndt, Munster, Aschendorf, 2008. Hugo de Sancto Victori, Super Hierarchium Dionysi, CCCM Vol. 178. Hugonus de Sancto Victori Opera, 3. Turnhout, Breppels, forthcoming English translation. Shoe of Saint Victor, explanation of the rule of Saint Augustine, translated by Aloysius Smith, London, 1911. Hugh of Saint Victor, the soul's betrothal gift, translated by F. S. Taylor, London, 1945. Translation of De Arha Anime, Hugh of Saint Victor, on the sacraments of the Christian faith, De Sacramentis, translated by Roy J. De Ferrari, Cambridge, M. A., Mediaeval Academy of America, 1951. Hugh of Saint Victor, selected spiritual writings, translated by a religious of C. S. M. V., with an introduction by L. Red Squire. Fire, London, Faber, 1962 reprinted in Eugene, Oregon, WIPF and Stock Publishers, 2009 contains a translation of the first four books of De Aca Noe Morali and the first two of four books of De Vanitate Mundi. The Didascalicon of Hugh of St. Victor, translated by Jerome Taylor New York and London, Columbia UP, 1961 reprinted 1991 translation of the Didascalion soliloquy on the earnest money of the soul, trans Kevin Herbert Milwaukee, Y, Marquette University Press, 1984 translation of Soliloquium de Arha Anime Hugh of St. Victor, Practica Geometriae, trans. Frederick A. Homan, Milwaukee, Marquette University Press, 1991. Hugh of Saint Victor: Extracts from Introductory Notes on the Scriptures and on the Scriptural Writers. Trans Dennis Turner, in Dennis Turner: Eros and Allegory, Medieval Exegesis of the Song of Songs, Kalamazoo, Me, Cistercian Publications, 1995, 265 to 274. Hugh of Saint Victor on the Sacraments of the Christian Faith. Trans Roy de Ferrari, Eugene, Oregon, WIPF and Stock Publishers. 2007, translation of De Sacramentis Christianae Fide, Boyd Taylor Kuhlman and Dale M. Coulter, eds. Trinity and Creation, a selection of works of Hugh, Richard and Adam of St. Victor Turnhout, Breppels, 2010, includes translation of Hugh of St. Victor, on the Three Days and Sentences on Divinity Hugh Feiss, ed. On Love, a selection of works of Hugh, Adam, Ackard, Richard and Godfrey of St. Victor Turnhout, Breppels, 2011, includes translations of the Praise of the Bridegroom, on the Substance of love, on the praise of charity, what truly should be loved, on the four degrees of violent love, trans. A. B. Crable, and soliloquy on the betrothal gift of the soul Franklin T. Harkins and Franz Van Leer, eds. Interpretation of Scripture, Theory. 
a selection of works of Hugh, Andrew, Richard and Godfrey of St. Victor, and of Robert of Melun Turnhout, Belgium, Breppels, 2012, contains translations of, Didascalion on the study of reading, introduced and translated by Franklin T. Harkins, on sacred scripture and its authors and the diligent examiner, introduced and translated by Franz van Leer, on the sacraments of the Christian faith, prologues, introduced and translated by Christopher P. Evans topic See also topic Art of memory hashtag Principles, where Hughes Didascalicon and Chronica are referred to. Hendrik Monde topic References topic topic Further reading topic Sickard, P. 2015 Eider Victorinum. La tradition manuscrite des herbes de Hugues et de Richard de Saint Victor. Repertoire complémentaire et études Bibliotheca Victorina 24, Turnhout, Breppels Publishers, 2015 ISBN 978-2-503-55492-1 Acton Institute 1992 In the Liberal Tradition, Hugh of St. Victor 1096-1141. Religion and Liberty, 2-1 Jan, Feb, 1992 Kuhlman, Boyd Taylor, 2010 The Theology of Hugh of St. Victor, An Interpretation. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Evans, G.R. 2002, 50 Key Medieval Thinkers. London, Routledge. Harkins, Franklin T., Reading and the Work of Restoration, History and Scripture in the Theology of Hugh of St. Victor, Breppels, 2009, Illich, Ivan, 1993, In the Vineyard of the Text, A Commentary to Hugh's Didascalicon. Chicago, University of Chicago Press Luscombe, David, The Commentary of Hugh of St. Victor on the Celestial Hierarchy, in T. Boyagiev, G. Kapriev and A. Speer eds, Die Dionysus Reception I Mittelalter Turnholt, Breppels, 2000. McGinn, Bernard, The Growth of Mysticism, 1994, pp. 370-395, Moore, R. 1998. Jews and Christians in the Life and Thought of Hugh of Saint Victor. USF. Roram, Paul. 2009. Hugh of Saint Victor. Oxford, New York: Oxford University Press. Rudolph, Conrad. First, I find the center point. Reading the text of Hugh of Saint Victor's The Mystic Art. 2004. Wilson, R.M., ed., 1938 Saul's Ward, an early Middle English homily, edited from the Bodley, Royal and Cotton MSS. Leeds, University of Leeds, School of English Language Conrad Rudolph, The Mystic Ark, Hugh of St. Victor, Art, and Thought in the Twelfth Century 2014. Topic. External links Topic. Hugh of St. Victor. In, New Advent Latin texts of Hugh of St. Victor are available in the Migni edition at Documenta Catholica Omnia, http colon slash slash www.documentacatholicomnia.eu slash 1815-1875, underscore Migni, underscore Patrologia, underscore Latina, underscore O3, underscore Rerum, underscore Conspectus, underscore Pro, underscore Octoribus, underscore Ordinatus, underscore MLT, underscore H.html. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Hugh of St. Victor. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press.